Hey guys, my name is Jeevans, that's Jihad over there, and welcome back to where we keep it uncomplex. Sorry for the lack of videos the past few weeks. Um, New South Wales recently just reopened their borders and I just had to take a bit of a vacay. I had to go out there, hit the ocean, you know, dunk my head into the sea because I just really needed it. But in that time, I was able to fly these two drones rather extensively and now I can tell you why, give you some reasons why this drone is the next drone to get after the DJI FPV. Before he goes any further, I need to tell you the main reason why we had to buy a new drone. Because this guy crashed the FPV drone. Again, okay, look, I don't know who put the tree there, but suddenly there was a tree and then there was the ground and just... This is the second time we had to send the drone back into DJI to get it repaired. And it just gets, it's just very frustrating. Granted, it is his fault as the pilot for crashing the drone, but every time you break an arm, it gets annoying financially. So I needed something with a bit more grit, a bit more durability, something that wasn't afraid to go in the ringer, something that wasn't afraid to just get bashed and crash, something that just said send it. And that is now why we have the Nazgul Evoke F5. I mean, just look at those, just look at those arms, look how thick those arms are. Can you even, can that focus on the arms? <sighs> mm. Beefy. Like ultimately this drone has made me a better FPV pilot overall. So if you think you've got an understanding of flying FPV and you want to take it to the next level to, you know, better that flight experience, look into this drone. It's a bind and fly. So all you need to do is buy the drone already, already made. You just need to have the controller and the goggles link them together and it's ready to fly. I do intend on making a review on this drone. So if you haven't already subscribed for that, but listen to the end of the video for my findings from switching from the DJI FPV to this drone. Before I took the Nazgul out on its maiden flight, I had to do a bit of programming in this program called Betaflight. Essentially all I did was turn off or disable angle mode and angle mode is just something when you're flying, it will just go back to horizontal every time you do a turn and it will just automatically go back to horizontal. I had to disable that so I was able to do like flips and turns and rolls and all that. And it's just a safety reason iFlight does this so that to the beginner, whenever they take the, take the drone out on their first flight, you know, they won't crash it quite so easily. But yeah, while the drone was being shipped, I also bought the DJI remote control as the, the flight controller, the flight system inside the Nazgul is the DJI HD system. So it was compatible with the DJI remote control and the V2 goggles that already came with the DJI FPV. So I had, I was able to save some money there. Didn't have to buy an extra pair of goggles. I also learned how to read, charge, discharge LiPo batteries. Like when I was searching up online, how these batteries work, I had this impression that it was gonna be a task and a half to actually look after and maintain those batteries. But over time, like once I got used to it, it was actually pretty easy to maintain and keep the batteries healthy. So the charger I brought for my LiPo batteries, it was just a local one I bought from Australia and it's, I don't know, I feel like it streamlined the charging process pretty easily, the charging and discharging process. And once you get the hang of it, it becomes quite simple to look after and maintain your batteries as there have been cases where LiPo batteries have blown up. Yeah, I just have to put that out there, but at the same time, just make sure you're keeping within the same vicinity when you're charging the batteries. But so far, I haven't had any problems with them. So the charger I brought was the Sky RC2200, which is local to Australia, I believe. Like I did, I was about to get the one everybody has, the that gray box looking one, but it was very expensive on Amazon. And this one came a lot cheaper and was local. So I decided to get that one. So yeah, if you're looking for a battery charger, try to see what's local to you. You know, look at a couple of reviews because they could work pretty well with charging LiPo batteries, but just make sure you look into it because there are some that aren't that great at charging LiPo batteries. So yeah, I bought the battery charger and two extra 1300 milliamp hour batteries. Now for the flying experience. Okay, maiden flight, new drone. Let's do this. Am I in frame? Should be in frame. All right, I'm going in. I thought I had a good understanding of what FPV was. That was until I flew this drone and actually flying a properly tuned drone that was made for acrobatic flying is just, wow. From the start, I just felt like I had more freedom and control with this drone. Like the Nazgul feels more precise and more agile than the DJI FPV. Like bear in mind, like this is my first time flying a drone, an FPV drone that is not the DJI FPV, but that transition from the DJI to the Nazgul, it was just very noticeable and 
it was very comfortable like even though the rates were a lot different to what i was used to i didn't change the rates at all but those rates and the tune of the, the nazgul is just it just makes that flying experience so much better the Nazgul with this DJI HD system already feels great, so I could only imagine how good it would be flying analog. Maybe one day I'll try that. But at the same time, my gripe with the DJI FPV was that it's camera. So I had to mount a GoPro on top of the DJI FPV. But in doing so, it hampered the, um, the maneuverability and the agility of that drone. So that's why when I put a GoPro on this drone, this drone is like made with the intention of putting a GoPro at the front. So it already feels smooth handling all that weight and at the same time with the DJI FPV I wasn't as comfortable flying through objects or beneath objects so when I put a GoPro on top the, the GoPro is sitting on top here while the camera my field of view my point of view is down here so it's about that length of a ways away when flying so if I'm flying underneath an object that I have clearance from the main camera the GoPro might not have clearance and actually just hit the GoPro off with the Nazgul, the distance between the two cameras is a lot more closer. So what I'm seeing in the goggles is close to what the GoPro will be seeing. So I'm more inclined to go through gaps without hitting the top of the GoPro. So the Nazgul is a lot lighter than the DJI FPV, even with a GoPro and the battery on top. Like here's a clip of me going full throttle and then cutting it off. And you can just see how much hang time this drone has, which is a factor of its light weight, but also its powerful motors. I mean, this is expected because the Nazgul is more catered towards acrobatic flying. And I did buy the dead cat version, meaning the front arms are more spread apart so that the propellers aren't in your field of view when you're flying or in the GoPro's view. Apparently this does affect flight performance, but I haven't felt anything that says otherwise. Don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna keep and fly the DJI FPV because if I'm doing anything a bit more long range, I'll have more ease of mind using the DJI FPV. So say if I'm flying, long ways away or um, I fly behind an obstacle if it loses signal I know the drone is just gonna pause me there and start flying back towards me if I lose signal with the Nazgul it's just gonna drop out of the sky and then I have to begin my two kilometer trek to find it which is gonna suck also I would prefer to use a DJI FPV when it's slightly raining it's a bit more sealed off than the Nazgul which actually is pretty sealed off with the side walls that they've recently incorporated but at the same time the DJI FPV I still prefer to fly that when it's slightly raining, which I don't recommend to fly in the rain, but at the same time, it is a bit more sealed off and I have flown it in the rain and it has survived. The Nazgul can handle more weight more efficiently. Like it doesn't, it's not phased as much whenever I put a GoPro on top, like it would phase a DJI FPV. And I have to mention the durability of the Nazgul, like the frame and the, the arms are just very thick and rigid. So it's gonna be very difficult to break and to break the frame of this drone. And it's funny since the DJI FPV has all the safety features, I'm actually more daring on the Nazgul, doing more flips and stunts and all that type of stuff in the air. Especially when I take off the GoPro and it becomes very light, it's just amazing to fly. I'm like the tune on this drone that it's shipped with, it is it is very great for flying, acrobatic flying. And it just handles like prop watch and um, coming out of dives and spins in the air and turning. It's all just much more smoother and just much more seamless. It's just something the DJI FPV can't handle very well. I just hope the next FPV drone DJI makes, it's they make it with a great tune and durability in mind. Cause to me, the most important thing is the flight experience since I am the one with the controls and in the drone. So when I am in the air, I wanna be as comfortable as possible knowing I have full control of what this drone will do. And that's what the Nazgul does for me. So the main trade-offs really is the safety features. So like the ability to hover or the pause function or the intelligent battery like DJI does facilitate a lot of the handling for you. So, you know, the clip in battery, the clip on propellers and the just plug in and the battery will charge by itself and it will know when to stop and all that. Like it's all very consumer friendly. And at the same time, if you crash the drone, you can just send it back to DJI and they'll have it repaired and sent it back to you. With the Nazgul, it's all very DIY. So though the Nazgul does have the better flight performance, a lot of the processes is manual. So say like the battery, to keep the battery in place, you actually need to use straps. Or if you wanna put on or take off the propellers, you use a socket driver. And if you damage or crash the drone, it's really up to you to learn how to repair it and switch out components. Still, I hope to be true that this is the next drone to get after the DJI FPV. It's not something you have to do, 
but I believe it's a great stepping stone to entering deeper into FPV. Anyways, that is all I have for you today. I hope to see you in the next one because I actually have some mad clips I'm going to be uploading and working on in the next few weeks. So definitely like and subscribe for that. And I always just deeply appreciate it. That's all we have today. Adios amigos. Peace out fam. See you in the next one.